And as you open up the wheel, which is right about here, you're gonna go wide, and you can use all this curb on the left-hand side. Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey, and welcome to another video of the series, A Lap Around. And this time we'll be going for a lap around Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya for this weekend's Spanish Grand Prix. Now this is a track which gets a lot of mixed reviews, particularly because of the format Formula One uses, which is very boring usually. Now the track itself, I actually find quite interesting. The issue is for overtaking and cars following each other, there's just not that many good passing opportunities. But the driver on a qualifying lap, it's a great circuit. Like the Nürburgring in my previous video, Circuit to Barcelona Catalonia is actually one of the earliest tracks I ever knew, so that's also special to me as well. Let's go for a lap around, and I'll show you all the tips and secrets you need to know to get a good lap around Barcelona. Before I begin the lap, there is one thing I did forget to point out. Barcelona has two DRS zones, one along the front straightaway, which is great because it promotes a lot of overtaking, and usually in the race you'll see a lot of great moves here, and then you also have a DRS zone in the back straightaway. However, because of how short the back straightaway is, and with sector three being hard to overtake in, you usually don't see too much overtaking there. So here we are at the start finish straight, and for Barcelona, you want a high downforce setup and a high grip setup. Reason is, uh, you're gonna have a lot of heat, so tire management's gonna be important, obviously. But the big thing is you don't have that many straightaways. You have the main straightaway on the front, and that's not crazy long, and you can usually get some good passing opportunity there. And the back straightaway is very short. And also, as you'll see with turns like turn three, which is high speed, in order to get a good exit for that little mini straightaway between three and four, obviously you want to be carrying as much speed through there as possible. Same can be said about the turn before the back straightaway. Now, as we go down the start finish straight, one important thing to note, it's actually going to be slightly downhill. Now, it's not a massive downhill like a track like Portimao, but it's still important that you want to make sure your brake values is set right. Now personally, because you're going to be braking in a straight line, maybe a little bit of trail braking on the end, you can kind of have it in a mid-range regular setup. And you're going to be braking right past the 100 meter board, and then you're going to be turning in. And what's actually interesting about this track, about turn one in particular, it's slightly banked. It's not much, it's a few degrees but it's enough to the point where you can actually get the car rotated pretty easily. And the first couple turns, you really wanna prioritize turn two because that sets you up for turn three, which is right before the end of the straightaway. And turn one, you only wanna prioritize if you're overtaking in particular. So for turn one, you do not wanna hit this curve on the inside. The reason is you come off the banking and it's very bumpy and it's gonna throw the car off line and potentially off the rubber or into the marbles for turn two. Now after turn one, you're gonna to wanna to point the car in a straight line and the idea for this is the track's actually going to be a little level. And what you'll do is if you hit it just right, the car will sink in right before turn two. Now the curving at turn two, some people use. Personally, I really don't like to because again, you go from that little bit of banking and to the flatness, and it's just a very uneven bump. And the whole idea is if you can set the car up nicely right parallel to the curb, you'll be facing perpendicular for turn three. Now as you exit right to the green cement bit, the important bit to note is it's gonna be slightly uphill. So obviously you're gonna want your brake bias continuing that center motion because you're not gonna get any elevation changes that are significant yet. Turn three, you're gonna wanna move the car slightly out, but I would recommend 40% over. So we're still pretty much to the right of the track. And for turn three, which is a very high speed turn and flat out in the new cars, and this car, which is a 2017 car, it's not gonna be flat out. Want to be as smooth as possible with the wheel, as little movement as possible, and you're just going to want to gradually open up the steering so you can be carrying as much speed as possible. Because there's a little straightaway between three and four, and what's nice about the curbing exiting turn three, you can use all of it. So coming up to turn four, this is a great part of the track, and firstly, sector one of Barcelona is amazing. Now, for overtaking here, you don't really see it much. Sometimes drivers go down the inside, although Daniel Kvyat in 2019 went around the outside of Kimi Raikkonen, which was a fantastic move. Now, the important thing with turn four, as you'll note, if I switch the camera view, as you can see on the left side, there's a lot of marbles. Um, in particular, it's a very high graining corner, so if you're managing your tires, this is a very important corner for that. But also, there's a lot of grip on the inside, so you actually don't need to have to use the whole track. So, you're gonna be carrying a decent amount of speed, and you're just gonna wanna set up for your exit. And so usually you'll just stay inside and then kind of hold the steering wheel in the right position. Don't go all the way to the left, even though that'll get you a better exit because you have this hairpin coming up. Now, this is where we start seeing the elevation changes because from turn two all the way to four, you're going slightly uphill, but it's not enough where you notice it. But all of a sudden, when you're coming up to turn five, you're actually going downhill. Now through here, since it's downhill, obviously you're gonna wanna have more engine braking, but the important thing is you can slide your brake bias a little rearwards as well, since you're gonna be trail braking a little bit, uh, especially on an overtake move, which is a good spot for it. Obviously the important thing, 
getting your downshifts right and setting up for the exit here because you're going to have a lot of speed you're going to be carrying from here. So from here, you're just going to want to be very smooth with the wheel and it's a very late apex turn. And if you set it up right, you can use pretty much all the curb here, although I wouldn't recommend going into the green bit back there simply because it's very, very bumpy. So as you can see with the green bit, if we take a closer look, you can see it's actually pretty bumpy over the red and white curb. And if you go all the way out to the green bit, you're just pretty much fighting the car and my steering wheel is uh, an interesting reaction to that. Now this section right here is easy flat out and you got a slight left hand kink, but the important bit is to cut your distance. So you're gonna move all the way over to the left and then point the car in a straight line so you can be all the way on the right. And then you're coming up to this next section, which is a bit like Aquamina Rally at Imola. Reason for that is you have a left right and it's slightly uphill. Now the important bit is to carry as much speed as possible. However, you do want to use a lot of curbing here, but the important bit is not too much. If you look closely from the front view, you can have the red and white curb, which is fine, the green, which is fine, but if you look right there, you have a sausage curb. Now, for those who don't know about sausage curbs, the whole idea of sausage curbs is to prevent you from abusing track limits, and the whole idea is to just keep you on the main part of the track and not use all the curbing or cement runoff. So if you run over them, they're very bumpy, it will very much upset the car, and you'll have a horrible setup coming up for the back straightaway. You're gonna to wanna to go as close to it as possible, but do not hit it. Now from here, you're still flat out. An F1 car has plenty of downforce for this section, and then you're coming up to this turn, which is almost flat out. Sometimes you can take it flat out, depending on what tires you're on, or if you're managing tires or not. Now one important thing people often forget about this turn, it's actually slightly a blind turn. As you can see, you can't really see your exit point. So you really gotta be confident on your turn in, make sure you set up for that late apex. Now, like I said, this is almost flat out, and in qualifying, it'll probably be flat out. So the important bit is making sure you use all the curb on the exit. Now, as they're coming, it's actually pretty straightforward. Red and white curb, and then the bumpy green bit. It's not horribly bumpy, unlike the earlier section, so you can actually use it. And now you're coming up to this back straightaway. Here, you're gonna wanna set the brake bias slightly forward because there's no steering involved. And this is a really, really good spot for overtaking. Although with the new 2021 layout, as I'll show you, I'm not so sure. So in the old layout, you would brake hard and then turn left. And then where there's the red paint, you would go out. But for 2021, they're actually changing this part of the track. So rather than having the tight hairpin, which was good for overtaking, you're instead gonna go straight. Now I'm not sure if the simulator will let me do this, but let's see, it is. So this is the new part of the track. Now through here, your apex is actually gonna be pretty late. It's right about here, but the whole point is you wanna open up the corner, because you can see, you can carry quite a bit of speed. And then you're gonna be rejoining the track. Now for right here, the important bit is setting up for this long right-hand turn. Now personally, this is one of my favorite turns, particularly because you can get really close with other cars. Now it's a long double apex turn, and there's a very important way to set this up. Now you're gonna be braking before this turn, obviously. However, you're gonna to wanna to downshift in the middle of it to slow it down, because the turn actually tightens up a little bit. You're gonna to wanna to come as close to the curb as possible, and then open it up. And as you open up the wheel, which is right about here, you're gonna go wide, and you can use all this curb on the left-hand side. Now this is the section which really, in my opinion, ruins the track. In the old layout, you continue going straight, have eh, sort of a 90-degree right-hander, although it's a bit rounder, so you can carry quite a bit of speed. But the current layout they use has this weird setup of two chicanes that are identical, and it personally kills the racing because you can only go single file through there. And obviously, if you're trying to follow or battle someone, not really gonna work well, especially in a modern Formula One car with the amount of dirty air they have. So this turn right here, you actually carry quite a bit of speed, use all the curb, and then you can see from the rubber marking, you're gonna keep the wheel pointed right, so you're not gonna go all the way left because you have the next, the double chicane. So the double chicane, pretty hard in the brakes here, slightly downhill, so again, turn up your engine braking, set your brake bias a little rearwards if you have to, and the whole important thing is not to carry too much speed. Now obviously, you wanna go as fast as possible because your straightaway's coming up, but if you carry too much speed, you're gonna hit the sausage curbs. And the sausage curbs will really punish you here because they will guarantee to screw up your exit. So you're gonna to wanna to use the red and white curb, as you can see, but do not hit those sausage curbs. Now from here, a lot, bad habit a lot of people have is they start turning in way too early for the second part of the chicane. And as a result, they end up either hitting the sausage curb or going fully over it and bottoming out the car. So personally, what I like to do is just remind myself, okay, wait one second, now turn in. And what that does is it sets you up nice and parallel to the sausage curb. Now through here, you wanna be as smooth with the steering as possible. 
because you can use all this curb on the left, but again, be careful, yellow sausage curb. So ideally, like the Red Bull ring, you're just gonna wanna put your tire nice and parallel with it, and maybe bump it if you want to, but don't go over it, because it's gonna upset the car. Now this right-hand turn is flat out, uh, without a doubt in a modern F1 car, but the important thing is, don't turn in too early, and also, don't hit this curb on the inside because it's slightly banked and it's very bumpy and it'll upset the car. Once you exit the final turn, you're gonna see this curb on the left. Now, depending on the car, you might need to use it or you might not. Usually in a Formula One car, you just use the red and white bit because you have plenty of downforce and grip available. But it's not too bumpy if you do make a mistake and need to use it. But most of the time, you're not going to. But what's good about this is it allows you to carry a ton of speed and get a good exit for the straightaway, which obviously, turn one, as I mentioned, that's where you're gonna have your best overtaking moves. Another part I did forget to mention about Sector 3 in Barcelona is the fact that it's very easy to overheat the rear tires, and this starts coming off the back straightaway. If your brake bias is set too far rearwards and you get a little bit of sliding, it'll be very difficult to manage the tires through Sector 3. Because you have the long double apex right-hand turn, that's very crucial for managing tires, and then with the double chicanes, obviously you're gonna to wanna to manage tires there. And exiting onto the front straightaway, you're gonna to wanna to carry as much speed as possible. But again, you don't wanna get any sliding from overdriving the car. So now I'm gonna take you for a hot lap around the track so you can see what it's like at full speed. All right, so there's my hot lap. Personally, I'm not too happy with it. I don't know what's with me today, but I just can't drive. Um, this is a circuit that you really gotta be consistent at, and if you're not having a good day, which for me is today, yeah, you're not gonna get a good lap. And my fastest lap, part of the reason I wasn't happy with it was because I did overheat the tires in sector three, which made it very difficult. Another thing was I just did not set up the car right. Personally, for me as a driver, I prefer a car with a sharp turn in that you can get rotating easily and I can control the rear end but I did not set up the car that way. And so I just was never comfortable with the car. So there you go. That's my guide to Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia in Spain. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. So as I'm Joey and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.